Hi, and welcome back to the channel. I've covered how to use IMPPG for solar image processing in previous tutorials. It's a fantastic tool, and it's great for pulling out details on the sun, revealing faint prominences, and sharpening your image. This tutorial is going to show you how I use IMPPG these days to quickly process my images. If you don't already have the basics, I suggest you review my How to Process Amazing Solar Images tutorial first. When I do solar imaging, I often take two or more 2000 frame videos of the same target, process both through to the IMPPG stage, and then decide which one to finish processing. On a typical day, I might have to process 25 to 50 or more images through IMPPG. What I've discovered after processing thousands of images is there are generally three broad ways in which I use IMPPG. Here's the first example. If I'm looking at a surface with no limb visible, like a sunspot active region, then I typically don't want to invert the image. I like the sunspots to look natural, in other words, darker than their surroundings. I've set up two different basic templates for that scenario that I'll get to in a minute. More often, I'm looking at an interesting prominence on the limb, but also some adjacent surface detail. In this case, I usually invert the image so that darker areas appear light and vice versa. I've done A-B testing both ways and presented both results on social media, and the polling is generally 75% in favor of the inverted view because it tends to show better contrast. For this scenario, I've created a couple of templates we'll get to in a moment. Finally, sometimes I'm looking at a prom on the limb, but the aesthetics of that particular image suggest to me it would look better non-inverted, although I still, of course, want to show the prominence. I have another special preset for that situation. What does this all mean? When I'm loading freshly stacked TIFFs from AutoStackert, I can see what type of image it is and then jump directly to the preset for that type of image. In many cases, I'm done right off the bat. Sometimes I'll decide to tweak the tone curve or deconvolution settings, but usually it's a minor adjustment. Often the time between opening a new image, applying a preset, examining the result, and saving the processed final image is less than 10 seconds. When you've got 25 or more images to process, the difference between 10 seconds and one or two minutes per image adds up quickly. Let's have a look at the presets I often use. We'll start with the first case, a sunspot region with no limb showing. My syntax for these presets starts with the letter S. S for sunspot, and then I use P for prom. Then I follow with numerical settings. One of these settings is a bit unorthodox. The general rule is you never push deconvolution past 1.3 in IMPPG but I've found that I can set deconvolution, sigma, and amount all to 1.8 and get a very good result. I call that P1.8. The other setting I often use is deconvolution at 1, sigma at 2, and amount at 4. I call that P124. I've done the same thing with sunspots, S1.8 and S124. But sometimes inverting the surface just doesn't look good. For that scenario, I've got a preset I call light prom, which pulls the prom out gently based on the tone curve I've created, but does not invert the surface. If you look at the top of the toolbar in IMPPG, you'll see three little boxes. The first one is for saving processing settings. That will save all your settings here, as well as your tone curve. The second one is to load processing settings. And the last one is to show recently used settings. So in my case, I'm going to load settings, and these are my settings. I've got one called light prom, one for prominence at 1.8, prominence at 124, sunspot at 1.8, and sunspot at 124. So for example, if I select sunspot 124, it first processes a small square in the center. I'm going to make that the entire image. So now you can see how the contrast is significantly improved over the area of the sunspot region. This is the shape of the curve that I use, the tone curve for this particular preset. If I change that to my prominence version, it's inverted now, so dark areas are light and vice versa, but now we can see detail along the limb. And the last general preset I have is called light prom. 
that gives you a sunspot version but with some prominence detail visible. And in some cases I prefer that one the most. But generally speaking, in this case, since there's not too much going on on the limb, I would probably choose the sunspot optimized version because you get much better contrast here than you would otherwise. So I'd like you to take a look at the tone curves here. This is the tone curve that I'm using for the sunspot preset. A very small depression here on the bottom left and a slight lift two-thirds of the way up on the right gives us that appearance. So you can see as I change it how that affects the image. I'm going to bring this back up to where it was. It normally would be around there. If I drop this down, you can see you pick up a lot more contrast and detail. Similarly, if I go to my prominence preset, you can see this shape of the curve here. It's giving us the inverted image. And as you work from left to right, you're working from the outside of the sun towards the inside. So if I move this, you'll see it affects the prominence. And similarly, as I go along here, it affects the edge of the limb, just inside the limb. And then looks at the main body. And then the darkest areas here are shown. Take a good look at these presets. If you want to copy them or play around, you're welcome to do that. And finally, here's the light prom preset. You can see this is a very unusual curve here. It comes up drops a little bit and then rises a bit and that gives us a little bit of detail on the edge of the sun. You can see the prom limb right there and then I don't want to go too dark or too light there so I'm around here and then this gives us some nice contrast around the sunspot, something like that. Kind of the ballpark. With the use of presets and by experimenting with different setting combinations, you can significantly reduce the amount of time you spend in post-processing. I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing your images. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons as it really helps me with the algorithm and it motivates me to keep adding more content. Thanks for watching.